Good morning. Welcome to the Australian Early Finance Briefing for Friday the 18th of September. My name's Nick here in Melbourne. Starting with unemployment results, they were out yesterday. Better than expected. The consensus was that it would rise from 7.5 to 7.7. Instead, it fell to 6.8, so 0.9% beat of expectations. The labour force participation rate also rose a little bit by 0.1%. But the, the otherwise the numbers aren't great. So the actual rise in hours worked only rose by 0.1%. And the other thing is a lot of the job creation was through sole trader ABN creation. That's largely people in the gig economy registering ABN to either work as an Uber driver, a delivery, you know, a contract courier driver, those sorts of things. So not great there. As well, it's worth mentioning that the payroll data that was released earlier on mentions that based on the, the drop in payroll, which does capture 80% of all employees in Australia, that would translate to 120,000 people actually out of work based on the drop in payroll. So it does seem not a really promising figure here. The other thing worth mentioning is that there will be a, a big pressure on the underemployment figure, and that's what the federal government's really been looking at. And many, you know, have cited underemployment, both Frydenberg and Morrison. That sort of is the real measure they're caring about, and, and rightly so. That's looking bad still. According to Bank of America, it's at 11.2%. So it will put pressure on the federal government in their October the 6th budget to sort of look at further ways to lift employment and, under, and reduce underemployment. The other thing worth mentioning is that at the end of this year, we have the moratorium on liability of directors for companies trading insolvent will be lifted. That should mean there'll be a lot more of companies having to go through insolvency proceedings, which will ultimately mean increased job losses. And that explains why a lot of economists are sort of expecting unemployment to start peaking around then and not now. And touching on the private equity market in the US, there's been a real pickup in what's known as dividend recapitalizations. That's where the company, the private equity firm, you know, is invested in issues, bonds, or you know, acquires a loan in this case, and then uses that money to basically just pay out a massive dividend to the private equity owners. That really increases the financial instability of the business and can put a lot of stress on the business, but it does mean that the private equity owners get a big payout. That means so far in September, 24% of all money raised in the US loan market, according to the Financial Times, has been paid out as dividends just to the private equity owners. So a huge proportion there, and that's up from 4% averaging over the last four years. But it is worth mentioning that up until 2015, there has been higher amounts done through these Divi recaps. It also suggests that people are really looking or clamoring for yield anywhere in capital markets. And this is giving investors sort of what they want. They're able to issue these loans with a bit of yield, meaning the investors get some yield where there isn't much anywhere else and the private equity owners get a big payout, win-win. Moving to the markets now, there's been a bit of a sell-off in the US an hour after open, Nasdaq's down 1.1, Russell's down about 60 bips. It seems like investors are largely almost disappointed by Jerome Powell's lack of adding much else to what he's already been doing in terms of stimulating the US economy. Investors were hoping for maybe more, maybe more duration buying, those sorts of things that didn't get announced. But overall, Globally, central banks seem to be still fairly accommodated if there's talk that the Bank of England still wants to introduce negative rates there and the Reserve Bank of New Zealand has told the Australian banks, which run all the banks in New Zealand, to be ready to implement negative rates later this year. That is your early update for Friday. Have a great end of the week. Thank you.
This podcast is for investment professionals only and should not be relied upon by private investors. The podcast is provided for informational purposes only and does not constitute financial advice. The values of investments can go up or down, so you may get back less than you initially invest.